Good evening, First Baptist Church family. We hate not being able to gather in our fellowship hall for Wednesday evening Bible study, but we're glad to have the technology that we do to allow us to continue to study together. Instead of a normal Wednesday evening Bible study, the way Pastor Jim, Luke, and I have done for the past few weeks, we want to take advantage of this time to introduce you to a new friend of ours. Mike Knuckles is a professional counselor through Wake Forest University uh, Baptist Health Network, uh, far, part of the CareNet Network, and we look forward to meeting Mike this evening instead of having our normal Bible study. So I'm going to introduce him to you in a moment, and, and, and of course you know Pastor Jim, our senior pastor here. I'm A.J. Reynolds. I'm the associate pastor, and I want to begin our time together in prayer, and we'll, we'll go along with our discussion uh, this evening. Let's pray together. God, we thank you for the time that we have together this evening. We thank you for technology that allows us to share together, even when we can't gather on our normal Wednesday for Bible studies. Lord, we thank you for Mike. We thank you for sending him to us. He's already a great blessing to our church ministry and our community, and I pray that you would just continue to bless him and use him as a great resource to serve us as a church and our neighbors in the days to come. Lord, we ask that you bless our time together this evening, and we ask that you be glorified in all that we say and do. Uh, we thank you for the privilege it is to gather together. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Jim, why don't you, uh, why don't you introduce Mike to okay. our church family? Well, Mike, welcome, and uh, we're you. really glad to have you here, and we're glad that uh, you can join us this way. We'll look forward to getting you in front of our folks. But Mike will be our counselor, and right now he's going to start off a half a day a week. On Mondays, he'll be here, and we'll talk to you more about that. We want to make sure that you know how to connect with him. And uh, our, our goal is that we provide counseling to our church members and to our community at a low or reduced rate, uh, no cost if possible, but certainly... Uh, uh, We'll take the, the Wake Health will take insurance, and Mike will talk about all that and explain that. But we, but we want to be able to make counseling accessible as a ministry of our church to people that go through uh, life issues. So, Mike, if you would just start off, tell us a little bit about your background, your training, and your qualification for this job. Okay. Um, well, well, first, what I'll say, Jim and AJ. Uh, I, I'm very excited uh, about this. Um, I, I love to be a part of new things, and so this is right up my my personal alley for, for things I like to do. Um, I'm also excited to work with the church on what we can do to build up this ministry. Yeah. Uh, of course, I'm a big believer in counseling, otherwise I wouldn't, wouldn't be here. Uh, and so... Um, I think this is a great opportunity you have for serving your community. Um, uh, I will tell you, uh, well, I, I spent my early career with a small publishing company. Um, we published trade magazines, and I, I did uh, mostly the business stuff, the accounting, the personnel, the computer stuff, the hauling boxes around, things like that. Yeah. We were a pretty small company. And... Um, uh, at the time, I had had uh, started, you know, really renewing my faith. And uh, to be um, honest, you know, when uh, I grew up in the church, like a lot of us did, uh, I believed in God and Christ all my life. But it was really somewhere around my mid to late twenties that that I really felt what I felt like a, a salvation moment. Right? Well, I felt like good. God called me. Hmm. Um, and it was after that point where I said, that, that's it, I, I'm there, um, that uh, I felt really a call to do something to serve. Hmm. And um, uh, I, I was went through kind of a discernment process. I um, went, ended up going to uh, on a mission trip to Ukraine, uh, and that changed my life. I hmm. mean, it, it really showed me the, the bigness of Christ. Wow. Um, especially meeting people that was uh, right after the Soviet Union fell, and so meeting people who had spent lives in concentration camps or had family members disappear, and you know this is um, way across the world, and and they believed in the same Christ and worshipped the same Christ I did, and mm. uh, it, it really uh, showed me the bigness of God, Amen. and and so. Um, out of that experience, I came back 
uh, really kind of lost going to work uh, and thinking, gosh, I, what am I doing with my life? Um, and so I went kind of through a period of discernment. Um, uh, I felt called uh, to go to divinity school, which I did. I, I graduated from Campbell uh, University of Divinity um, in their early days mm -hmm. um, of the school there. Uh, was absolutely convinced then and now that that was a calling for me to do. Um, but I never felt called to actually be a minister in the church. I did, did interview a couple of places and, and did serve as a, uni, uh, as a youth minister for a little while. Uh, but it, it just didn't seem that was the right road. And um, mm -hmm. just in praying over time... Um, uh, it just, I was in a, uh, believe it or not, a business meeting where my mind was wandering. Um, Imagine. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> uh, I can relate with that. <laughs> <laughs> when I finally figured out in, in the mission trips I'd been on, the, the, the happiest, the, the most joy I found was working with kids. Mm -hmm. And so um, I didn't intend to become a counselor. To per se, um, I, I wanted to work with kids, and the more I started looking into ways to do that for for a career, uh, counseling seemed like the way to go. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, I started at uh, Wake Forest Counseling Program in two thousand five, um, really with the intention intention to be a school counselor. Um, when I got out, uh, I actually worked. Um, a little while in an inpatient facility for adolescents. Mm -hmm. um, and then a position came open in Winston-Salem at a, a Title I elementary school. And so uh, I spent seven and a half years there in a school, um, which was a fantastic experience, I think, um, because, you know, in, in, in an office setting where I work now, um, you know, I see people's lives in 45 to 60 minute increments. And um, even when I was in the inpatient facility for adolescents, I was really kind of ingrained in people's lives. And, you know, a school is, is, a, is a life of its own. So yeah. you don't be, just become the counselor for the kids, you become the counselor mm -hmm. for the teachers and for the administrators. And I probably spent as much time with administrators and and parents trying to help people through their issues as I did um, sure. with the kids. And um, so um, kind of toward the later end of that, I, I started into a private practice um, and, and started working more with adults in that private practice. Um, and so I've kind of had a range of, of different <laughs> counseling uh, experiences. Um, in that time, but um, I don't know that I said this, but I became a licensed professional counselor, which just recently they changed to licensed mental, no, licensed clinical mental health counselor, mm. which uh, is hard to fit on a card. Yeah, that's but, a long yeah. title. That's right. <laughs> that's right. Um, He's but, certified. But yes, that's right. <laughs> they gave me a license to do this stuff. So that that's the short of it. That's good. That's a good background. Yeah. And we uh, we were talking earlier that when we began discussing this ministry, we didn't think that we would be able to provide counseling to children because we thought that would be beyond the scope of what a person could do. And the Lord sent Mike, and when we interviewed him, we realized that he could counsel with adults and counsel with senior citizens and counsel with children, and he has a broad range of experience mm -hmm. and training, and that's that's really a good mm -hmm. a good step for us. Uh, so, so, Mike, what, what do you see, how, how do you envision this ministry would work within the context of our church? So, um, one thing I'll say is, um, uh, you know, I, I think, you know, sometimes the whole idea of counseling is, is foreign to us, or maybe we have misconceptions about right. that. Um, you know, I, I think that the need for counseling and psychology and all that has kind of grown one in terms of expertise you know the more that we learn over time it's just like professional ministers you know mm -hmm. one time there was no such thing but we've realized that there's a benefit to having you know people who have dedicated their lives to that and we support them um, right. financially as a as a career um, I see counseling kind of that um, in in terms of 
you know, there, there probably was a time when people did a better job of sharing with each other their problems mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and helping through things. And, mm -hmm. you know, certainly uh, the family units have become a little more uh, disparate in terms of, yeah. you know, we don't have our grandparents living with us in the same house and growing up or, or even next door. Uh, where you'd have some benefit of some wisdom and some help and some guidance. Uh, and so I, I see counseling as really um, an extension of what what families at one time and friends might have offered. Um, I also say, you know, I don't want to get too far off on something here, but you know, I, I think most of us are very resilient. Uh, I think we, we go through life's hard knocks, uh, and take it pretty well. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, a, a lot of what I've learned is me as a counselor, I'm there a lot of times when people just hit that place where, you know, I can't talk to my spouse about this or, you know, uh, I don't want to talk to mom and dad or anybody else adult right. about this or, um, you know, th this problem seems to have come out of nowhere. I mean, we all have those problems that come up that... Um, you know, you just can't see. COVID-19 is one of those. And, Absolutely. you know, if you've been paying attention, that mental health has been a real concern sure. um, right now. And, and it, it is. I mean, it's a very different situation for us. And, and, and we have those happen in our day-to-day -day lives, too. So um, what, what I see as, as this ministry is um, uh, you all, as First Baptist, uh, being able to reach out to people in a in a bigger form of depth, I guess that's that's what it is. Um, you know, um, I, I see it as an extension of things like um, making sure that other needs are met in the community, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and here in the church too. I mean, certainly this is this is a service for for the members of this it church is. too, right. um, and so helping to provide a place where people can. Um, you know, in confidence and without judgment and without, uh, you know, being felt like they're crazy or off their rocker, mm -hmm. um, can come and just talk through those things they can't quite Absolutely. figure out on yeah. their own. So, and I, I know, I know, I speak for Pastor Jim when I say that that we we try to counsel folks often, mm -hmm. and and folks that are battling severe anxiety and folks that are experiencing depression or other kinds of severe stress. We just we just don't have the capacity to counsel all things to all people, That's right. and so it's really good to have a professional on board that we can refer Absolutely folks to. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. So, so the kinds of situations that you would counsel would be what? So, um, from everything from uh, you know high stress. I mean, if we don't have stress, we're not paying attention these days. I That's don't right. think, uh, and so. It's actually pretty amazing, especially when I'm doing stress management with people, um, uh, how many people realize how much stress they carry around all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, everything from, from stress to uh, major grief. I, I mean, we all mm -hmm. have to deal with deaths, but, but some of them are, um, are not easy to deal with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of my first grief counseling uh, experiences with a, was with a five-year-old who lost uh, her father. Mm. Uh, wow. And I tell you what, that is not a situation that that um, is easy for anybody, especially when the other parent is grieving too. And right. Um, right. Uh, at least from a child's perspective, but I think we do this as adults too. Uh, we don't want to burden other people with our problems, and so we keep them to ourselves. Um, and so I think a lot of what I see as, as my calling is, is to be a place where people can unburden themselves without feeling like they're burdening somebody else. Right. Um, you know, I, I've dealt with people who have had uh, major illnesses um, that means a, a whole new life. Uh, I mean, there are some things that you, you just are not going to get over. Uh, and you have to learn to live a different way. Mm -hmm. um, AJ, you mentioned anxiety. Uh, there's a ton of anxiety in in a lot of us, if not all of us, at some point in time. And 
you know, when, when people are having things as extreme as, as panic attacks, the, the people who I've worked with who have on real panic attacks, that, that's an awful experience. I mean, it, it literally mimics death. You think your heart is going to stop. Uh, and um, so, you know, a lot of people carry that stuff around and don't tell other people about that. Mm -hmm. Or, mm -hmm. you know, they go to doctor after doctor after doctor after doctor and they're, they're physically fine, but something's not right. That's right. Um, and, and a lot of times what I hear from, from people is that um, they don't know where the stuff came from. And you know what? I actually believe that to some degree. Uh, I mean, we can go back in time and try to trace somebody's history to find out what happened. But a lot of times things come on and, and we don't necessarily have a root cause. Mm -hmm. um, and panic attacks are one of those things that, that seem to a lot of times come up and, uh, and anxieties like that. Um, and so it really, it really means helping people manage that down um, to, to where they feel like they're living again. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I, I work with a lot of people um, who, who go to the, the extreme of thinking suicidal thoughts. Uh, and I'll tell you, uh, even though I'm mentioning things like uh, suicide or anxiety or, or anything that I mention, um, I don't know that I've personally worked with anybody I thought was really mentally unstable or something like that. It, it's yeah. really... a a lot of counseling is just helping people like us um, mm -hmm. get through the messy stuff. Hel helping people that you might look at and say they're doing fine. Right. And, and they just need help. Right. Dealing with grief or depression or uh, our community has a lot of substance abuse uh, mm -hmm. issues. And right. so those mm -hmm. are the kinds of issues that yeah. you may see there. And, and, you know, that's part of... Um, you know, part of what we see is that people turn to substances or uh, other things. Yeah. I mean, it, it could be any kind of an addiction uh, to, to counteract some of the stress or anxiety or, or the other things that the, 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 you know, quote, demons that people live with. That's right. Um, and so, um, you know, a lot of those times those things are symptoms. Yeah. Yeah. Um, rather than, than a cause of something. And so um, part of what we'll do here is, um, although I'm not trained in substance abuse counseling other than one class uh, that was required, um, you know, part of what we can do is help connect people uh, with professionals that, that can help with those things. Mm -hmm. um, and so that, and, you know, while I talk about most of, of us you know, who might go to a counselor being, you know, fairly stable but just need some help. Uh, you know, there are those that, that have some real mental health challenges. Mm -hmm. um, you know, people with schizophrenia or people who are having hallucinations, people who um, uh, sometimes it's not an identifiable thing so much as a, a bunch of things that, that you notice about people that don't work. You know, they mm -hmm. can't hold a job, they can't seem to get their lives together they don't have any motivation at all and sometimes there's there's uh, bigger mental health issues there mm -hmm. um uh, i deal a lot with anger management uh and and most of the men that i know uh when i mention anger management they're like hmm maybe i need to come and see you uh we have a we have a i really, was just thinking that. <laughs> we, we have a love of, of anger uh as the male species but um uh, you, you know, sometimes that can be much more than anger, mm -hmm. you know, into mm -hmm. a, a, an area of, uh, you know, bipolar depression or, or something like that. Um, and, and, you know, the, there's a lot going on. Um, you know, our first responders, mm -hmm. uh, man, they carry a, a huge load. Right. Uh, and, and, and anybody, you know, right now, um, I cannot imagine, you know, being a, a doctor or a nurse or mm -hmm. e even somebody at the front desk at a hospital um, and having to deal with uh, all that they're having to deal with. I mean, just having to change out your protective equipment every time you go in and out That's of a right. room right. is yeah. taxing on the mental state. It is. And, um, yeah. 
And, and so, we have health care providers in our church at all levels. Right. Nurses work in nursing homes, hospitals. Right. right. And, and we, my, my brother's a firefighter down in Raleigh. Yeah. And he talks about secondary trauma. Right. right. How not, not just the, the folks that he's going to the call, but the folks responding to the call can right. experience trauma as well. Exactly. Yeah, and, and a lot of times that doesn't crop up till after you're out of the situation. So, you know, there are a lot of challenges with people who um, come out of the military, come out of or retire from, um, you know, police force mm-hmm. or even from, from the medical field, depending on what you're doing or... Mm-hmm. Um, that, that those symptoms of, of what might be post-traumatic stress don't come up because when you're trained to do a job, uh, whatever job you're doing, sometimes that keeps you distracted and focused. And when you get away from that, those things come back. Um, Would it be and, accurate to say that a lot of the really serious, the advantages of having you here for someone with really serious mental illnesses is that you could identify those problems and then refer them to more definitive treatment uh, in, in another place. Would that be reasonable? That's right. And so, um, you know, AJ was asking me earlier, you know, what, what uh, you know, I saw in my, my practice of counseling. And mm-hmm. I, I would probably consider myself a little more of a general counselor. Um, mm-hmm. If I have a specialty, it's probably in, in anger management, uh, anxiety, and uh, helping people with suicidal thoughts. Um, those are just what I see the most of. Yes. Um, uh, but there are people who are trained to do certain things, like uh, you know, people who have eating disorders. Um, there are people who are trained for that. Right. Uh, mm-hmm. There are people who are trained to work with people who are schizophrenic mm-hmm. uh, or who have uh, personality disorders or something like that. So, yes, uh, I see that part of the ministry here as helping to connect people to the right place Mm -hmm. um, rather than we're going to deal with everything here um, because I'm I'm not going to deal with everything here. I'm not trained in it. But what we can do is is hook people up to the right place. That's really good. And and see, we we see this, and Mike is on board with this, that we see this as a ministry of our church to bolster our own folks and also to draw uh, people closer to the gospel in our community. So... Uh, as a church, we have a we have a mission of of introducing the gospel to people at some point. Mike is is a Christian and is a counselor, and we might describe his counseling as faith based, but it's not biblical counseling. So, Mike, talk about that just a minute and mm-hmm. tell everybody what what I mean by that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, when people ask me if I'm a Christian counseling, I I say, well, I I am a Christian. And I'm a counselor. (laughs) Um, And so, uh, one, uh, there are people who are are certified as Christian counselors, and I am not. So I don't want to misrepresent my qualifications, too. Um, But even though I have a divinity degree, I've I've actually been on staff of churches, been minister, and and I've been a counselor. Um, You know, the, the way I approach my counseling is really from the professional counseling uh, aspect. Um, I, I all of my clients know that I'm a Christian. They know I have a divinity degree. I'm not. Uh, I'm not trying to separate the right. two. Uh, and certainly, um, in sessions, you know, people who um, who are bolstered and, and who find hope in biblical references or or want to talk about their faith. Um, that is part of the counseling field. It doesn't matter whether I'm a Christian and a counselor or not. If you're counseling, you're probably going to get into faith issues. With Absolutely. People. Um, mm-hmm. people of all different faiths, you're, you're going to have to. And um, uh, in, in my perspective, though, um, uh, yes, I, I'm very comfortable talking about faith-based issues and, and CareNet, who who's my kind of overarching boss, uh, is that way. I mean, it's a faith-based uh, counseling right. service mm-hmm. uh, as part of Wake Forest Baptist. Um, uh, there probably is a distinction, though, I would say, between uh, Christian counseling and, and bi- biblical counseling and me as a Christian who's a counselor. Um, 
you know, people who have real deep faith struggles and so forth, um, that that's probably the realm of you guys. And so, you know, when when people come to me and and you know, it's a it's a discernment thing, um, you know, dis, you know, discerning a calling or discerning a a, a dilemma that, mm -hmm. that involves their faith. Um, that that's something that probably is more in the realm of, of pastors. And so um, one of the things that I hope that we do and I plan to do and I hear from them is that, you know, we're going to work together on, on that kind of thing to make sure that we're um, supporting people in the best way possible. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, you know, I'm, I'm going to try not to overstep my bounds uh, of where I feel like I am professionally in what I provide so that's right uh, and and I think I think that's really important I think it is an important distinction we certainly you would never con never counsel anybody contrary to the Bible but you, a person that has no faith at all you could you still have common ground to sit down and counsel with them right and, and that's I think that's important to have a ministry that's an outreach for our church and for Pastor Jim and me our our hope is that the more we serve members of our community, our neighbors, the fewer church folks. He's, I mean, uh, there will be more folks that don't believe in the Bible that, that, that Mike gets to see. And so being able to counsel those folks, not necessarily as a pastor, but as a, as a counselor that's professional, then he can refer those folks back to us if they have questions right. about the Bible. That's right. And, and one thing I'll, I'll tell you is just a, it's always been fascinating to me. So um, even my clients who come in uh, with no faith, uh, stated faith beliefs or anything <coughs> like that, um, uh, we end up talking about faith at some point, uh, especially if I meet with them more than about four or five times. That's right. Mm -hmm. it, it just happens. Uh, well, I, it, I have it had, undergirds every element of life. Right. Is. And, yeah. and um, uh I've had mothers uh, <laughs> on the me. phone tell me, don't you ever mention anything about God or Christ or anything about faith for my child because he will shut down and you will lose him. Uh, and if I just wait and let them go their pace, it is almost guaranteed. It's really phenomenal. They'll, they'll bring it up on their own. They will bring it up. And it, 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 may be, it may be in a backlash kind of way of, you know, I hate it when Christians do this. Sometimes that's an opportunity to to, to to help people in, in that manner too. So uh, while I'm not necessarily uh, uh, you know in the counseling part uh, office to shepherd through people in their faith, that would be something for you all to do. Um, it comes up. That, that's yeah. just the way it is. So that's right. Uh, as soon as we can, with all this virus uh, concerns, we're going to get Mike to come and talk to the church and. We hope that he'll be available to you to meet him ahead of having any kind of uh, professional relationship with him. But I would say to you that if you are interested in getting counseling, that we're going to put the number out. We're going to put on our newsletter this week uh, some information about how to contact him. You can contact him, work with him directly. Mm -hmm. He will talk to you on the phone or meet with you by video conference, whatever way he can until he can meet with you in person. But I encourage you to... Uh, to learn more about it, to, uh, as you know of situations in your family or in the community, in your neighborhood, folks that might need this ministry, you're certainly welcome to contact Mike. You're not going to be working with the church. You're going to be mm -hmm. working with him directly. It's very confidential. It's important from them and important for us to do that. Uh, I would ask you as a church to pray about this ministry and uh, to welcome him as he comes on board with us. You'll, you'll see more and more of him. Uh, Mike, I wish we had a lot more time today, but I think we're about out of time. This, this isn't our normal Wednesday evening Bible study, but we, we would have done this in our normal Wednesday right. evening Bible study. I do have a couple of announcements before we go. Please pay attention to the videos we put out. We've got another one coming out this coming Sunday morning as we worship together at our homes. Stay tuned to our, our socials on social media. Follow us and everything. Look out for our weekly email this week. It'll be sometime on Friday morning. Uh, look out for that, and we'll have a, a, letter, a newsletter coming to you in the mail in the week ahead. But please stay tuned to what we have going on. We're really looking forward to getting to know Mike better and, right. and pursuing this great, great relationship. And we hope that God uses it 
for us as a church to be a blessing to our community. And we started uh, posting Monday, Wednesday, and Friday a Bible, a short Bible uh, uh, devotional last three to five minutes. So look for that on YouTube and Facebook and all the places. Mike, thank you. It. Thank you for being oh, here. We're really glad you're here. I appreciate you all. Pastor Jim, would you yeah. would you pray over this ministry and close our time? I will. Thank you. Mike, thank you. God yes. bless you. We're glad to have you on board with thank us. You. Father, we thank you for this time and for this brother that is joining our team. We thank you for his skill and for his faith. Lord, I just pray that you'll use this in ways that we cannot imagine. You've already worked to open doors and to to, to provide an expertise that we did not even know we needed. So, mm -hmm. Lord, we thank you for this. We thank you that you're at work in a variety of ways in our church, through the ministries of our church, through people that serve. Lord, I pray for our fellowship that's there. You know their hearts and everything about them, and I pray that you'll minister to them, fill them with your joy and peace in these days. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Amen.